Well, g'day, good morning, and welcome to the channel. I'm in the field, and I'm gonna be testing the Canon R7 on the Canon 200 to 800. I can see kangaroos everywhere. The sun hasn't come up yet. It's nice and early. I got up very early this morning. I've driven here in the dark, and I'm just excited to share with you my adventures today. I'll talk you through what I'm planning, what I'm seeing, and what I'm doing, and how this kit performs. I honestly believe this is a really good kit for the money, the R7 200 800. We get so much reach, 800 millimeters, this is a 1.6 crop factor, so 800 times 1.6 gives us 1280 millimeters field of view, which is just crazy. And unbelievably, you probably can't see it, but there's three magpies on this dead tree, and it's quite a way away. And let's see if we can take a photo of it. And I'm going to 800 mil, and it's almost full frame. I'm just hoping that they all look in a certain direction so that we can get the shapes of the three birds. There we go. Oh, they're singing, they're all singing. How good was that? <laughs> so the Australian magpie is a very uh, common bird here. Beautiful song. And the beauty of this lens is I am a long way off, but I can just capture the scene all the way from here, which is just awesome. And I'm just looking around to see if there's any other birds and trees because the sun hasn't come up, I can underexpose it and get the backlit. So that is where your background's nice and bright. So yeah, so that's all I'm doing at the moment is just looking for compositions and hopefully making it work. I've just noticed a kangaroo in the long grass over here. We've got no light. So this will be an interesting test of the um, autofocus. So what I'm gonna have to do is use a very high ISO. So I'm just going for a headshot of this kangaroo ISO 6400, shutter speed is low, try and keep that noise under control. So it'll be interesting to see how the R7 handles such high ISO. I'll share those shots with you now. So I've just spotted a composition. There's a brown falcon on this dead tree. And I'll zoom out to 200 so you can see what 200 looks like. And then we'll zoom in a bit. So we've got kangaroos feeding, cockatoos in the tree, a brown falcon over there. 200 to 800, I can take photos of all three subjects using the zooms. That's where your zoom range is amazing. We've got the sun just about to come up. I'm just thinking, just walking around to see if I can change my composition. So we've got the sun, we've got the sun coming up. And I'm just trying to include some cockatoos, just seeing what we can get. It's, I'm struggling with the composition. The birds aren't quite where I want them, but it's just so beautiful. We'll take photos of it anyway. What I'm gonna try and do is find some kangaroos, I think, that are backlit. So let's go for a walk and try and find some kangaroos that are backlit. Sometimes you just get lucky, you know. I've been walking down this road looking for kangaroos, couldn't find them, but I've come across a pair of cockatoos preening each other and it almost looks like a heart. They're sort of on this branch behind two other branches and we're just framing it up and taking some shots now. Just waiting for them to give me the right moment where we can see both birds. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, he's got his crest up. Oh, it's magic, absolutely magic. 
That is honestly what it's all about. Like, how could I have predicted that? How could I have even imagined that that shot would happen? That's why you've got to get out there. What? That's why you got to get up early. That's why you got to <laughs> see the sun come up, wander about, and just keep your eyes open for composition. Like I said, I was walking down, I <laughs> couldn't find any kangaroos, and then I see two cockatoos in this tree. The sun is literally coming up behind the tree. So we've got this beautiful backlit scene. These two cockatoos are preening one another, and then I'm waiting for some action. I'm waiting and waiting, and then we get the crests up, both crests up, backlit, awesome. Kind of makes the morning. I'm so happy I got that. My arms are a bit sore, so I've just been hand holding this, you know, waiting for some action for a couple of minutes and my arms are fatigued. So there is that weight, probably around 2.7, 2.8 kilos all up, but my arms did get tired after that. I'm just trying to see if there's any other birds about, because we've only got this beautiful sun for so long. But no, that was awesome. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that shot as much as I enjoyed taking it. All right, let's have a look at something else. So one of the strengths of this lens is it's just got so much focal length that you can kind of make shots that you didn't think you could. So uh, there's a cockatoo in this tree here. It is a long way off, it's quite high. Let's see what it looks like. Try not to overexpose it, Dwight. So that cockatoo is miles away. But we can still take a photo of that bit. <laughs> so we just had a cockatoo flying. I don't know if that worked or not. We had a cockatoo flying over the grass. We took some shots, so. <gasps> It's just the, the range you get. You get, so field of view wise, you get 320 to 1280 millimeters. That is such an enormous range of 320 is a bit, uh, it's probably not as wide as I'd like if you're using the R7. So you do struggle to get these wider shots, but 1280 is just makes those subjects way, way bigger. All right, what else have we got going on? All right, so we've had a really good start to the day. I've loved the photos I've got so far. I'm having an amazing time. I'm gonna walk back to the truck, which is <laughs> ages down the road, and we'll go for a drive to a swamp and see what we can get. But uh, a great morning so far. I just stopped because there's, a, there's an Eastern Rosella feeding in this tree but I don't have quite the right sun angle. But definitely one of our more flighty species, the Eastern Rosella. Um, I tried to get close to it, but no chance. And the shot I got, I don't think will look any good. I'll share it with you, but um, it was backlit. It just wasn't working for me. But you know, this happens. It's, it's good that I share with you that I don't just automatically see a bird and take a good shot. Like there's plenty of species even here in Australia that don't like humans and fly off. And I know that's a big issue that many of you have is getting close. And that is always a challenge. The beauty of this lens is, is you don't have to get as close as you used to because we've got 800 millimeters, which is awesome. And I just want to take a minute. So I've just been walking back to the truck and I can't wipe this smile off my face. And you know, I've had a pretty stressful week to be honest. And at the moment, I'm in this sort of elevated state of joy, I guess, where um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm not really thinking about anything else and I've got this bit of a shine from the shots I've taken this morning and the anticipation of what's ahead. So just wanted to share that with you that I'm, uh, you know, really loving it out here and very, very happy to be here and sharing it with you. So <laughs> we'll keep going and try and get some more shots. So I can hear superb fairy wrens. They're a common species, but they're just in these, these bushes here and they're popping up on top of the, uh, the bush. So I'm just gonna walk over there. I'll make a few noises and try and get one to pop up. So. Oh, there they are. Oh, there he is.
Oh, that was cool. We got the male and the female there. All right, well, that was a unexpected bonus. Uh, it's just opportunistic to happen to see them. I identified that these uh, low uh, bushes would make a good perch if they landed on top. So I was just, um, know the behavior, I guess. I, it's a high chance they will jump up to get a better viewpoint and uh, it's just a matter of waiting. And I think we got some shots, so um, that was awesome. Haven't made it back to the truck yet. <laughs> we'll keep walking. So I tried to get close to the uh, Rosellas and they're not looking their best to be honest, their plumage isn't very nice, but we got a few shots that might have come out okay. I managed to stalk them and obviously that 800 mil definitely helped us get a bit closer. So I'm not convinced on that shot, I'll share it with you, but we'll move on. Okay, well I hopped in the truck and I started driving towards this swamp where I am now and I spotted some kangaroos on the side of the road and just shooting out of the truck we managed to get these interesting portraits, we had some side light coming in and the detail here is really really good and I'm absolutely stoked with that. And I think it highlights just how good this combo is just shooting from the car. Because you've got so much reach you don't have to get out of the car as long as the uh, heat is off and the temperature inside the car is the same as outside hopefully you won't get the heat haze. But uh, that's what I was doing, I was just photographing the kangaroos as I was driving past. And then I've come down this road and you can see all these dead trees around here. And this is prime bird of prey habitat. And there's a brown falcon at the top of this tree up here. And I've managed to get some really good shots of this. Oh, there's another brown falcon. So I've managed to photograph this brown falcon. It's an interesting marked one. The interesting thing about our brown falcons here in Australia is they come in all sorts of different plumage. There's light morph and dark morph and in between. So it's always fun photographing them because you never know what sort of morph you'll get. So this one was quite interesting. Got shots of that. And then I spotted a swamp harrier just sitting down quite low and I managed to sort of get a shot of it. I don't know how it'll come out, but fingers crossed it's okay because it was down perch, we got some shots. And then we had a Nanking kestrel so we've had four species of birds of uh, prey here, which is amazing. And I managed to get shots of just about all of them. I don't think I've got a whistling kite yet, but, um, but you know, that was just so much fun. And you can just walk around, that extra reach is fantastic. And another example of shooting from the car, I was driving up the road, there was a Nanking kestrel sitting on a perch next to the road. And you can see from the footage here, I just filmed inside the car a little bit. I've literally just reached out the window, full frame, nailed these shots, and the detail again is excellent. And I actually just decided to take some shots at 200 or 320 mil field of view, and then uh, 500, 600, 800. So you can see just how much reach you get with that 800 millimeters. It really does make that subject really big. So um, an amazing morning, really. We've got all sorts of shots, all sorts of species. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully the photos came out all right. I'm sure they did. My thumb again is getting a bit sore and that's my, often my, you know, the weakness is just this, the turning of the zoom ring is just a bit stiff and uh, I need to work on my thumb muscles, that's for sure, but amazing. This is what it's all about. It's getting out here. I haven't seen another person yet, just me and the birds and enjoying myself. So if you own this lens, I'm still working on the review. I'm still collecting images taken by you, amazing images that I will share. And I'd love to hear your pros and cons of the lens so far for the review down the road. Um, thanks to all the new members and existing members. If you're not aware, for less than a price, a cup of coffee per month, you can support me to get out here into the field and do what I love. And you can also download this digital calendar for free for your iPad, laptop, etc. But overall, an amazing day. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. See ya. It's just that versatility, isn't it? It's the having 280 to, what did I say? Eight, eight, six, four, eighty, twelve, eight. It's just having that zoom range. Like the field of view is 280 
to 1280. Is that right? 320. 322. <laughs> Two times 1.6. Three twenty. <laughs> it's just the the range you get. You get so field of view wise, you get three hundred twenty to twelve hundred eighty millimeters. 